What's up everyone? Today on Seth Leroy Hustle Adventures, I had to do an oil change on one of our vehicles on our van. So it got me thinking. I wanted to do this topic while I was doing that oil change. What to expect? Like um, I bought my van with 200,000 miles. I want to talk about the issues that have arose and the importance of you know having that backup money. So I'll go over the things that have happened to the van, stuff of that nature, and just talk about that because I haven't done a topic on anything like this so just thought I'd uh, get into it and just talk about it so everyone let's go uh, let's get get the talking and let's get this oil change done so first things first I gotta get some tools out of my cargo van out of the back of it because that's where some of the tools I want are uh, I got tools in the house too in the garage, but yeah, I gotta get the one specifically that I need right now to do this quick oil change. But that's why it got me thinking. I'm like, let's talk about you know issues that arise with the cargo van, things that happen, you know. And that's the thing because I bought mine outright for 13k, it had 200,000 miles on it, and now it has 259. And I think I bought it about seven, eight months ago or something. But let's go. Let's get this oil change done, and, and let's just talk about this type of stuff. I used to use. I bought this jack first, and then I went up to this jack. But for this, I always just use the ramps. But what I was gonna say is, what I was going to say is, what has happened? Okay, we got it at two hundred thousand miles. Um, our cargo van, two thousand thirteen Ford. 2013 Ford E350 extended. Um, and so when we got it, and it had 200,000 miles on it, I saw a lot of people, oh, this, that, and the other, you know, good luck with that old vehicle, stuff like that. But then I talked to Alan, and he said he had, um, he's had several of those, and his went up to like, 800,000 or something something crazy like two of them and in the end so after I'd say about 30 30,000 miles was when we had our first issue well maybe it was yeah about that and I had to fix a tire valve stem that's all that happened I was on the road I was in Iowa it was really cold and that was fun um to do but that was only like 60 bucks or something. And at first I was going psycho. I was doing the oil changes every 3,000 miles religiously. Like being a psycho like every week doing it. And then I found out from several people that that's not what you don't have to do that. And so then I started doing it every 5,000. And then I was doing more research. And found out you could even go longer. So I've been going every like seven to 8,000. Um, but anyway, so what I was going to say is then the next problem that had arised was, Are you doing all those? what was it? Yeah. I thought it was either my brakes or a wheel bearing or something like that, but it ended up being the wheel bearing. At first it was 400 and something out the door and they're really good to me at the shop I bring it to, but then they found out it was like welded together, this, that, and the other. Long story short, it ended up being $1,000. I was out of service for a week. But I have other sources, of, smaller sources of revenue. But, so that was not fun. Um, and then the other thing that we had was... God, what the heck else happened to it? Here, I gotta think about what else happened. There was one other thing that's happened since I've had it and put on 60K. 60,000 miles. Okay, so I talked to my wife, and it was the alternator and battery. And that was more recent. And how much was that? The alternator and battery, 600? No, that one was 1,000. The one before that was about 800, right? Oh, okay. So, yeah, she's right. She's always better with the numbers. So, in total, we've spent 1,800 on it? I think so. It's either 1,400 or 1,800. 1,400 or 1,800. And the reason I wanted to talk about all this stuff is obviously that these are the issues that can happen. And that's why I tell people always to have a decent 
safety net, like when people are being patient starting the business, a lot of people will say, oh yeah, I'm just waiting, you know, and I'm not going to dive into all the, you know, economy talk and all that type of stuff, but if you're going to start a business, you have to be patient and not just jump into it without having that safety net. Well, yeah, we started with $4,000 in our um, business account, and that we were just thinking, okay, for maybe some minor repairs and some, um, you know, to start with gas and stuff like that. But what we've actually realized is that it's pretty cool to have that extra because you can decide when your payday is essentially yep. borrowing the money you know is your profit from yourself. And then, you know, once you get paid that money, then you just get paid back. And we were getting paid weekly. So we, you know, sometimes we make our paydays Friday. We'd make our paydays Mondays if we didn't get around to it on Friday or whatever. But that money went in on Thursday. But it was always nice, you know, to get it before, because you, know, you had to wait till next Thursday. We'd be getting it the Friday before, or the Monday before, and then just getting it paid Thursdays. Um, but so when you start with that, it's pretty cool. But then um, once, you know, you start saving your, your, ta your taxes that you might owe at the end of the year or whatever in there, then you see your business account build up, you know, to $8,000, $9,000, and then you get the repairs coming out, and you have the money in there for, for the repairs, and as long as you're paying yourself back with everything, you know, that business account eventually becomes like a revolving door. It's pretty well, cool. And then how much, and then the way we do it with all of our vehicles, like our personal vehicles, everything, is we pay ourselves back with the extra money that we make that we don't need for bills. So didn't you say we paid 800 back on everything we put into the cargo van, mm -hmm. roughly? Um, we probably paid a thousand of it back. A thousand I'm of it back. I'm the one who's in charge of, yeah. of all that. Oil she oil knows all this. that stuff. So as long as we slowly oil pay it back, but you oil. must pay it back. You know, you well, can't just sit there and take from it and then, you know, soon. Okay. Before you know it, you don't have money for taxes at the end of the year or to do any more repairs at all like this the, it must be paid back quickly like um i think the last payment i made on repairs was actually like seven hundred dollars from profit because you have to just build it back up quickly you don't want that to go negative and um as far as the taxes in our account goes we don't know how much we just take 20 percent out of each load and we actually don't know how much we're going to have to pay in at taxes at the end of the year so we call that category taxes or savings and we have that built up pretty good too so it'd be cool you know if we didn't have to pay all that in at the end of the year because some people say like at 20 percent you'll be more than good so right that's what a bunch of people have said to me yeah, well, some people have said that they only had to pay in, like, $400 or something like that. Yeah, I've heard a lot of really good. We did do taxes this year, but we only had the business for a couple months. We had it, yeah, for, yeah. like, one month. Yeah, towards it. Mm -hmm. Here, I'm going to clean my hand up and figure out what else I have to say. So we moved into this house. We noticed we had a paper towel dispenser Love it. in here. Came with a bunch of extra rolls. We we're like, what are we ever gonna use this for? Use it every time. Use it every time. So thank you, people who used to own our house. Awesome. Sits right next to our pontoon boat. We got a video on that. If you want to check it out, it's pretty cool. We hooked a trolling motor to it. He caught a. Musky? Yeah! A huge musky in that thing. In this little paddle boat. You want to see how he docked that one? We got <laughs> how he docked it. How he got it into the boat. It was a struggle, but he did it. We got a video on that too. He catches it. The pull breaks. The real breaks. The real breaks. And he still pulled it in by hand. It's crazy. Yes, Seth Leroy, Hustle Adventures. This is my one little square in the whole garage. My rock tumbler. This thing runs for like five weeks at a time, but my one of my biggest hobbies is collecting agates, and our whole family actually does it. Once we get enough to put in one of these, we tumble them. They get beautiful. 
I own this part of the garage. Mine. Would you look at that? Right when I thought I overpicked my driveway, there was no more agates left. In this field, in this field of rocks in my driveway, I have yet found another, another prize. Put the new oil filter on, put the oil back in, Close the oil pan first before you put the oil in, and then we're back in business, baby. You look good under the van. Oh my gosh. That's the power bottom right there. Oh my god. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means, Mr. Nice? I've heard of it, but I'm, I'm not fully up on my bears and otters and stuff of that nature. I bought it on um, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yes, yep. That's Doesn't Mac talk about power bottom? Yes, he does. And so do workaholics. They talk about it. Yeah, this van was like 8,000 miles over the oil change. We were so busy with our cargo vanning because we, we, we must go cargo all the time. We couldn't do our oil changes. Yesterday I was sitting in the Coburg parking lot and I was like, hey, it's way over. You need to do the oil change. So we put the baby to sleep. I said, hey, while I'm putting the baby to sleep, it'd be a good time to do the oil change. What'd you say? Like thick mama. What? Like thick mama. Crowan just called me thick. Mm. Alright, we're good. We good? Alright, we're all done, baby. Yay! Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Holy fuck, I've radiated my whole shit. <laughs> That's never happened. <laughs> <laughs> e -break. E -break. Oh. oh, in case you're wondering. Yeah, it's still on. Oh. 192. We've had this how yes. many years? Too bad. Um, we've had yeah, like five and a half years on this thing. Yeah. She's still kicking, but we've had we bought it outright. Had no payment, no payment for five years. And that's how we got the cargo van. That's our other little car too. And that's my hydrangea standard. Of course, can't let our kids be for however long it took to do the oil change before they do something like like that. Or like when we got our brand new ten thousand dollar fence and they freaking colored all over oh, yeah, it with chalk. chalk. It was like panels of chalk. Yeah, this is what they do. So pretty much to wrap up this 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 video this topic i'm really big because you know i have my cdl i drove straight truck you do pre-trip inspection post-trip inspection uh in my personal van i even do like during my runs i'll be checking the the fluids checking under the hood checking things under the hood i'll check under you know just okay so i'm not the best at keeping my the back of my van and the inside that clean because i'm a i'm a squirrel cage when it comes to that but you always want to be checking your fluids, making sure everything's nice, everything is copacetic at all times because too, it's all on you. And that's the thing, I've heard people with leases and stuff that that works out where they have, um, you know, they have things where it's just like a copay or something. I don't know much about all that stuff, but that's the thing. There are benefits to that, I, I would see. But that's the way we do it. We sort of like, when we get things fixed up, we pay ourselves back. So it's almost like taking a loan from yourself, but it's all, you know, your money. 
but that's something I wanted to just say was like you definitely you definitely got to be serious about that checking your fluids and just checking your vehicle out and feeling it you know listening for things um don't be accelerating like a psycho don't be you know don't drive it like my little Honda Fit I have don't drive it like you know a psychopath I also do have AAA. I have roadside assistance. I keep a socket set with me, you know, drill bits, all that stuff. Um, yeah, you've got to keep, you know, the things that you need, it, you know, for maintenance. I mean, I had a blinker go out. I just, brum, brum, you know, went to O'Reilly's, put a blinker in. Um, so yeah, that was. Pretty, she said 14 to 1700 is what we put into it. And now it's at 265 or 259 thousand miles, and she runs beautiful. So. I mean, and that's the thing. That's why I say that you should at least have two to three grand. That is just money for fix it, fixes. I guess I don't know too much about those leases and what goes on. I'm saying if you buy one outright like I did. Because um, then, too, we have the starter go out in our Honda Fit. Um, our van has been, pff, we've had that thing six years at Chrysler Town & Country. That thing's a beast. It's a 3.8 engine. Um, but anyways, that's, that's really it for this one. I just wanted to do this one because I was sitting there and I'm like, that'd be a good topic to do. Because, you know, I don't talk about it much, but I am serious about keeping up on my van and not. Don't drive it stupid. Pretty much is the thing too. Just drive it cautious like it is your business. But anyways, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification if you want to. If you don't want to, that's cool. I'm just glad you're rocking with me. We do have merch. We appreciate all the support. And there's a little heart by the YouTube, by the YouTube likes and whatever. Because I have people who have contacted me because I don't charge anything, as you guys know. I don't charge nothing. Um, there's people who have, and I don't knock that hustle, but there are people who do, you know, uh, what's it called? Courses, this, that, and the other. But I give all the information for free down to where I get loads, everything. So if you want to, because there's people who ask me, hey, can I send you money? And the thing is, I appreciate it to all end, but with Cash App, all that stuff, I just don't. My wife said that that can be a, a sketchy thing. So everyone, seriously, I appreciate everything you guys do when it comes to support and the positive energy just is flooding in all the time. I, I just can't believe it. Um, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification if you want to. I already said that, I'm guessing, but it's been, uh, we've been busy making a lot of different moves with uh, the business and just seeing what's out there. But everyone have a blessed day and oh yeah, keep hustling.